transatlantic rhythm and finds the Caledonia is ready to start in her test flight to Newfoundland. President de Valera takes time off from his election campaign to wish Captain Wilcoxon and his crew a happy landing on the other side. And in not too pleasant weather, the giant flying boat takes off on a hop of nearly 2,000 miles. Meanwhile, winging in from Newfoundland comes the American clipper. She makes a perfect landing, and by this double triumph, the aerial conquest of the Atlantic becomes a reality. It was common behavior for, for, for residents to, to cry at night or to walk up and down, you know. It's when you're alone in your bed at night, that's when you look at, you, you reflect on your life and think how, you, how, how your life was panned out. I do remember meeting a man one evening as I came back out of the centre. There was a man who was just standing outside on the steps with a suitcase beside him. And he was just looking around and just said, what is this place? Is this where I'm supposed to be? He'd been brought from the reception centre in Dublin and it was dark. He was driven up these roads, what looked like it was into the woods and he was dropped at this old grey building and he stood there shaking his head and saying, how can, how can anyone live in this place? Am I supposed to live here? How long am I supposed to live here? What's this going to do to me? It was the sort of place that not just damaged, it destroyed people. This is what the Irish state did to people who came seeking international protection and they're still doing it. I'm John Lannan, I'm the CEO of Doris, and we're a migrant support and human rights organisation that are based in the city of Limerick. Most of our engagement with the centre would have started around 2014. We'd have realised how desolate, how desperate, and how an appalling place it is for people to live in, and we started calling for its closure. We've had the Magdalene laundries, we've had mother and baby homes, and now we've got direct provision. A continuation of the forms of institutionalised living that we've inflicted on people here in Ireland over the decades, where people that um, the authorities or that society may not want to think about, may not want to know about, are put out of sight. Here it is now, so you can see. Mount Trenchard was always seen as the worst of the worst of direct provision centres. There was always a fairly clear view that people were sent to the place as a form of punishment. So you ended up with people who had spoken out against the appalling conditions in other direct provision centres here, people who were attempting to assert their rights and to advocate for others here. You had people who, who came with severe mental health problems as well. So rather than providing people with access to the services that they needed. They were sent to Mount Trenchard and put out of sight. When they kick you out, you go to Mount Trenchard. Mount Trenchard is the last place. There is a lot of problems here. People are sick, standing in the fronts of mirror talking for hours. You can hear them at the night time. People here who catch themselves just to escape their reality. We write a letter to the justice. We write for manager. We're trying to change. We're trying to help other people. But there is no change. There is no change. I thought I would never come back. You know, when you have sort of experience and sort of traumatic experiences, you just want to forget about it, you know? Just put it at the back of your mind. So we could hear stories about Mount Richard. They say this horrible place where they take residence if you don't comply, if you're deemed a threat. You, you'll be worried, you'll be, you'll be thinking to yourself, if I ended up in a place like Mount Trenchard, what am I going to do with myself? I complained about the lack of food in Newbury, that is an air power hotel. And then um, I, I was transferred here. 
the owner of that of the hotel, of that debt provision center, said to me, categorically said to me, that I've made his life miserable because um, it was this issue was taken up by one of the local newspapers. And that's when the nightmare began. Fights every day. The windows were broken, there were always people fighting, but I don't blame them because people are frustrated. You see, you just look at where we are. Imagine being in a place like this for 365 days a year. People would try to commit suicide, they, they slit their, their wrists. Obviously, um, we had uh, some residents who could smear feces on the walls because they were frustrated and had mental health issues. After a while, the guards stopped coming. You could call the guards when there was a fight, a, 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 a vicious fight, and then they never turned up. They were tired, I think, because it was, it was the norm. I mean, they got called on a regular basis. One resident tried to set the place on fire. Somebody jumped from the second floor trying to commit suicide. We had a strike here, first one, I, I was part of it. But, um, the residents were frustrated and our issues were not being addressed by Rhea or by the management. So we organized the strike. The guards were, were, were called and then the, the, the owner of the, of the place, uh, Alan, I think his name is, he had to drive down from Cork. So um, Alan took me aside and he said he didn't want any, pr any trouble for me. So he, he wanted to give me some money for me to shut up. So he, he tried to give me 200 euros for me not to, not to cause any trouble in the future, which I declined. Three days after that, I got transferred from this place. A lot of people, they call it prison. It's so isolated. You don't see houses. You don't see people. It's just the building with the male occupants. Everything that's happened, happens within the building. There is no security. If anything happens, the staff go to the office and lock the door. We have to call the guards ourselves. Last time we were banging on the office. Please open the door. Please open the door. Because I don't know if you watch and there is blood coming out. It's leaking blood. It's like watching a film or something, you know? If you bring a normal person here, and you will see what happened to him after one year. He will change mentally. He's brand dead. He's not normal. You know, in many respects, this was an area that set trends in terms of international travel with the flying boats, with the airport that was set up in Shannon, the other side of the estuary, with the first duty free in the world. It's ironic in many ways that, you know, this old disused convent was then used to lock away people who were coming here from other parts of the world. If it's managed properly, if you have a thousand people, if they're managed properly, they'll be happy if they're looked after with love and kindness and sincerity. My name is Frida Keane Carmody. I'm a medical doctor, wife, mother, grandmother, and owner of Mount Trenchard. We bought Mount Trenchard following a public auction in the 1990s when it was for sale by the Mercy Nuns who had run a boarding school there from the late 1950s who had very happy students. I've never met past pupil from Mount Trenchard who didn't say what a great place it was. So I was very concerned, very concerned following um, um, some um, articles in the newspaper that residents at Mount Trenchard um, were having a hard time. When I was checking the, the people who had the contract, I was assured that uh, in fact, n not just was Mount Trenchard a really good place for people who were seeking asylum, but there were so many occasions when people from other centres who had huge problems there and were causing disruption and problems, those residents were sent here, where they appeared to get better. And it was a place of healing for them. And um, so I was really pleased to hear that because this was music to my ears, which was what we were hoping was happening. And I believed that. In 2019, there was a, seemed to be an escalation of, of, of complaints and negative publicity. In fact, the, the people who were getting the, um, the contract 
were saying to members of my staff that they had squatters' rights here. I made a few um, attempts to come in here um, myself and um, I was not permitted. On a few occasions I came in to find that there was only one person in charge of what I thought were 85 men and, and that was a female um, who I gather was employed um, uh, in a housekeeping capacity. And then I became very, very concerned about the residents following the reports. That was the reason that I did what I did in December 2019. It was following the horrendous publication of a report by Doris Limney of the situation at Mount Trenchard. I could no longer be watching over a situation where there were, on a hu humanitarian level, much more than a, a, nothing to do with a building, on a humanitarian level, that people in my house were being mistreated. So that led to an extremely personally difficult, most difficult time of my life when I had to come and take over this place with security, with catering people, with legal people. We found um, a situation here that was um, that was frightening. It was it, it it laid credence to completely to the report, but we found much much worse. I understand it was one of the residents who would have asked my son to um, look at a situation which was uh, harrowing. Some body who was very disturbed um, attempted to take their own life. The manner in which that attempt was made, that evidence was still there several years later. Um, immediately they stacked up beds on the stage to reach that and to cut it down. The man in question is alive and well and it had, he didn't come to any harm, thank God and the situation was remedied. But it's, it's frightening to think that that was there in full view of people who are already extremely troubled. You know, when you come here, the first thing the manager tell you, you know, you need to get out of, of here. He say, I'm going to take your name and attendance. Give your papers card to somebody else, go and work, don't stay here. So now there is only 30 residents staying here. Imagine you are cooking food and you are receiving money to cook for 85 and you are cooking for only 30 residents. When we came in, I was expecting, I was ready. We had catering people um, ready in, uh, for 85 people. I gather there were 85 people um, um, registered on that time. In fact, there were 35 residents. That was it, 35 residents. On the following day, some more came, whether they were told to come, maybe up to 40. The big problem when we got here was that they were trying to occupy the office and, and take whatever documentation, financial, um, numbers of residents, to take whatever they did. I didn't look at any of their, I wouldn't do that, but I didn't look at it, but I was very concerned that it might be needed by somebody. I was expecting people from the department. I was expecting people from the Roslimni. I was expecting people from um, humanitarian people to come during those five days. I was waiting for them and nobody came. After five days of very good work here, I believe it has had um, um, good consequences. I was this introductory injunction and I was sent out of the, from the place. The contract was not renewed for the, the people who, who were getting the contract on this, on, on Mount Trenchard. So what's that, like a month later, the contract? A month later, a month approximately later. a month later. The contract was due for renewal. The, the, the contract was, was not renewed.
There's no way um, the government or the reception and integration agency didn't know what, what was going on. Everybody used to complain. We used to email them, we used to text them, we used to call them, we used to tell whoever. We used, everybody knew what was going on. People in power are trying to do their best, but it's not okay. There's a system underneath their command of control that's completely unfit for purpose. Uh, there used to be um, um, a sign here that said uh, Mount Trinchard Falls. I think it was over here, but it, it was, it's been removed here. But I think it's important for people to know the history of this place and what, did, uh, what this place represented. People were destroyed. People were destroyed in the deprivation center. And when they got to their residency after a long time, they couldn't do anything with themselves. Direct provision is still in existence. The mental health and well-being of people who have spent years in the system has been very detrimentally affected by the manner in which the state is treating people who come here seeking protection, safety and sanctuary. I think Mount um, Trinchard is reflective of, of the whole direct provision system, you know. It's, it's, it's not an outlier, the whole system is rotten. The system has to be closed. <laughs>